I Manmohan Singh I Pranob Mukherjee I P Chidambaram do swear in the name of God that I will bear true faith discharge my duties as a minister for the due discharge of my duties as prime minister The second innings of the UPA government completes three years in office today. Three years that have been plagued by one crisis after another. Poor economic growth, rising prices, policy inaction and a series of corruption scandals have eroded the credibility of the Manmohan Singh government. On the big story today we ask, what can the government do to restore confidence? I have a bunch of guests joining me but before that my colleague Abhijit Niyogi is standing by to give us a sense of all that's gone wrong for the UPA this time around. Abhijit. Yes, Harsha, I think at this point in time, as we speak, as the UPA completes three years in office, it's really not looking good, and I think that's a no-brainer. The fact of the matter is, if you look at the economic side of things, uh, it's replete with uh, stories of economic mismanagement. We were once at a cusp of about 10% growth. You wind back to 2009-10, those were the days of heavy growth. Inflation last year, all of last year, well, almost all of last year was in double digits. Today, the rupee is, a, is probably uh, the huge crisis point and no amount of interference, intervention by the RBI, by the government seems to prop up the rupee. The external situation is bleak, of course, helped uh, in large dollops by the Eurozone crisis. The immediate challenge, Harsha, is, is of course the economic management bit of it, but the presidential elections. Now, who will become the president? The Congress would like to install somebody of its own choice. The problem is, and the dilemma for the Congress is, that somebody like the current finance minister, Pranam Mukherjee, goes to Rashtrapati Bhavan, that in itself will ensure, perhaps, that uh, the UP will again be non-functional for the rest of the two years' time, because this was the man who was the chief troubleshooter for the Congress party, which is why it, it is not uh, difficult to understand why the Congress has been reticent about its presidential choice and it's not come out in the open. But that's just one aspect of it. <clears throat> the problem is not so much of economic management. It's not about fixing the rupee here or the current account deficit here. Those, of course, have to be done. But the problem really is, does this government have the will now or the nerve to govern. The problem, if you look at it, is more fundamental. For the first time in the history of independent India, this started, of course, with 2004, there was a bif bifurcation of authority at the very top. Sonia Gandhi, the UPA chairperson, calling the political shots, whereas Manmohan, uh, Manmohan Singh really was an appointee of Sonia Gandhi and actually was just the head of the government. And understandably, there was a lot of paralysis and, and uh, a lot of undermining authority at the cabinet level and the results are there for everybody to see uh, in terms of economic management, in terms of political management of the country. The elections, the recent state elections have not helped. If Rahul Gandhi was being propped up as the next big thing for the Congress party, the UP elections paid, uh, put paid to those hopes. So even on the electoral front, the Congress has its jitters. On the bureaucratic front, you know, th this was a government which came to power uh, on the context, on, on the back of the fact that Manmohan Singh is a clean, is, is, a clean, is perhaps the most honest uh, man uh, a, a, as Prime Minister of the country. But his government has actually presided over perhaps one of the worst scams in, in the history of independent India, 2G scams. So it's not, uh, it, it's perhaps easy to understand why today the bureaucracy is almost in a state of paralysis. So if you put all of this together and look forward, with reforms almost in deep freeze, obviously, uh, Harsha, the, you know, the future doesn't look so bright. But can the government, you know, uh, conjure up its nerves? Can the government muster enough courage now to say, look, you know, our strategy has not paid any dividends so far, electoral and otherwise. Let's get going with those big right. ticket reforms. Let's make a U-turn from here and let's govern now the country for the next two years. Well, if that happens, perhaps there could be some hope. Otherwise, they, perhaps it's a little too bleak. Harsha. Valid point, Sabajit Nyogi. Many thanks for joining us and putting that in perspective. Joining me now, Lord Meghna Desai from London, Ajay Bodke, 
uh, head of investment strategy at Prabhudas Lila. The gentleman, many thanks for joining in. Uh, Lord Desai, I'll start with you. As I said, this edition of the UPA has been plagued by one crisis after, the, after another. Uh, scams particularly have eroded the credibility of this government. At least that's the popular perception. How would you rate the performance of UPA2? Well, yes, certainly not as good as the first one. There clearly has been, uh, with the same team, same brilliant team, uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh, Pranab Mukherjee, Chidam Maran, Vantak uh, Singh Alawalia, Sonia Gandhi, I think the performance has been somewhat uh, less uh, uh, sparkling because the, the government has been surprised by the scams and scandals and then it has been weakened by its coalition partners not behaving according to any kind of coordinated strategy. Now, this has UPA or the government bungled on managing perception more than it has managed problems. Would you say that this is a, a, this is a failure of image management? I think that is definitely the case. But, you know, there is just so much an image manager can do because I think starting from the fact that soon after they got into power, drought happened and they lost control of inflation. And then both with the Commonwealth Games and then with the uh, 2G, uh, it began that nobody was in, no one is in charge of the policy response. And so it seemed the government was drifting or being surprised. Uh, and the government, which is very clever in, in the first phase, the UPA won, the same sort of actors have not been able to get a grip. Now, you know, it's, it's a matter of puzzle. Is it to do with uh, the health problem that uh, uh, Mrs. Gandhi had or the health problem that Dr. Manmohan Singh had just on the eve of the election, last election? Uh, it, it's very hard to say. But there clearly seems to be a a kind of mismanagement of, uh, of the situation. You know, uh, you made the point that, that in 1991 it was pretty much the same team, Manmohan Singh, Chidambaram, uh, Pranam Mukherjee, and the PV Narsim Rao, who liberalized the economy. And today the same team is pretty much running the government. Why have they failed on furthering reforms? Have they failed in the first place? Well, you know, what, what the thing is that... Uh, Reform is thought to be not politically very popular in India. No political party has openly championed reforms and more reforms. So reforms happen by stealth, you know. For example, the government did allow foreigners to hold equity in, in Indian business, but did it very quietly. And then lots of technical improvements have been done. But uh, I think uh, the Chandra Babu Naidu example was very interesting because Chandra Babu Naidu was a hero of the World Bank and he lost the next election. So people feel that while you can do reform, don't advertise them, don't boast about them, you know. And certainly politically they are not very popular. So a government has to be very cautious in introducing reform but not make a big play about it. Fair point, uh, Lord Desai. But, you know, uh, the market has been extremely critical of uh, some of the lack of decision-making or slow decisions taken by this government. I Ajay Bhatke, come in on this. You know, we've heard what the market's concerns are. Uh, when we talk to the government, they would probably say that some of the market men and the views in the market have been far more harsher than necessary. You've got the global macroeconomic environment that's not working in its favor. You've got coalition politics that's not allowing the government to take certain calls. Uh, uh, is the market being way too harsh than necessary? Well, I think uh, what the market is basically expecting from the government is action on a couple of fronts. One is, I think, the market understands that the government is got hemmed in by the pulls and pressures of some of its uh, mercurial allies that are not allowing it to sort of, you know, uh, unveil second generation reforms. The government has sort of, you know, made attempts, you know, uh, to go in for... Uh, foreign participation in multi-brand retail. It has expressed its intention to allowing foreign airlines to uh, rescue the beleaguered Indian airlines. Uh, however, I think, uh, unfortunately, it has not been able to build a political consensus among its own allies. So I think the market is looking forward uh, post the current budget session uh, that the government will sort of, you know, uh, quick start certain very important issues 
like uh, increasing uh, fuel prices, petrol and diesel prices, and sort of you know some action also on the urea front. Uh, uh, so, so, so I would say that you know uh, some uh, at the same time uh, some of the issues like uh, policy paralysis that right. is leading to slow movement or no movement on issues like environmental clearances, forest clearances, and land acquisition issues for some of the key Marquis industrial and infrastructure projects. Right. If the government is able to expedite them, mm. then I think one could see uh, uh, a, a certain positive booster in sentiment uh, from, the, uh, from the market perspective. Ajay, you know, I, I'm just looking at some of the decisions that have not been taken yet by the government. Um, you mentioned FDI and retail, FDI and aviation that just requires a cabinet decision is still being held up, FDI and defense. Uh, you know, the, the question really is, slow decisions, no decisions, or perhaps bad decisions, you might have reasons for it, but somewhere there is a price to pay. What, to your mind, is the price that India will have to pay? Low growth, low earnings, what is it? See, one clearly is expecting uh, if there is no increase in fuel and fertilizer prices, mm. a large fiscal slippage from 5.1% of GDP, the market is expecting that it could go down to 56 to 5.8% of GDP. The current account deficit, which was at around 1.3% in FY08, is already at an unsustainable 4% in FY, FY12, mm. which is impacting and spooking the currency markets keeping the interest rates at elevated levels mm. and also impacting the sentiment and the valuations in the equity markets. So I think, uh, 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 so in my opinion, I think uh, uh, the government needs sort of, you know, to act on multiple fronts uh, uh, to address the challenges of uh, 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 slowing industrial growth, controlling current account deficit, controlling fiscal deficit. And uh, there are two other trends which, you know, I would like to point out, which is impacting the economic governance. Uh, there is a growing assertiveness among many state governments and a kind of march towards sort of, you know, uh, federalism on one hand. At the same time, the response from the center, unfortunately, has been perceived to be effete and indecisive. Now, that is impacting the economic governance of the country. Sure. The second trend that I can see clearly is that, uh, and, and, and as I mentioned a few, uh, some time back, the stalled decision making due to perception of encroachment by judiciary on issues that fall under the domain of legislature and executive. Now, this is leading to sort of you know, a slow movement or no movement in many important issues. So, the government needs to act, act right. decisively to overcome these challenges. I, I take your point, Ajay. You know, uh, Lord Desai, you know, some of these issues that Ajay is talking about are issues that, are, that have been debated quite a bit. Uh, the fact of the matter is business sentiment, investor sentiment is, an, is at an all-time low. If you look at economic indicators, IIP, inflation, uh, rates, none of that is showing any signs of optimism. In the next two years, what do you think that the UPA government can do to change that sentiment? Well, you know, my, my guess is that when right now everybody is too focused on the presidential elections, you know, politics dominates everywhere. E economics takes a very second, uh, second place. After July, after the presidential elections are over, they'll have to do some very hard thinking. That can they do something in the remaining time to regain initiative, to regain popularity, to make it look like a success? Because I think it's very important that UPA2 looks like a success when they finally go back back to the uh, to the electors. Uh, and I think at that stage it may be. I'm just hoping that all the delayed reforms on FDI and on on GST, uh, all those things would come through. Perhaps maybe deficit could be brought under control. Uh, the, the oil price could be deregulated. Diesel could be deregulated. Now all the, we know what has to be done. And we know that the, peop the team in charge can do it. The question is, will they have the political will to do it? That is the problem. Lord Desai, you talk about uh, political will. You know, the, uh, the other big casualty of the UPA government has been Dr. Manmohan Singh's image. From being India's original reformer, the Prime Minister unfortunately is now seen and uh, has been uh, characterized by many as a puppet, as a lame duck government and so on. And many say there is silence on critical issues have, have done him in. Uh, the question is, why doesn't he quit? Well, you know, I have known, if I may say so, many prime ministers uh, in my life. No prime minister ever wants to quit. 
uh, no matter how unpopular he or she is, uh, they, they, they don't want to quit. It, it, quitting is not part of a, a prime minister's uh, sort of a persona. I think what is interesting is that in 1991, uh, Dr. Singh was a finance minister with a very clever and crafty prime minister who was, who was a consummate politician, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Nassim Rao. Now he is himself prime minister, but he is not a politician. You know, he he has a very slim political base in the Congress party. <coughs> and while in UPA one the experiment looked like working, that Mrs. Gandhi was a politician and, and Dr. Singh was the chief executive, it has not worked in UPA two. I do believe that you know we have not been told the full story of uh, of why Mrs. Gandhi has allowed these crises to grow. She never did in UPA1, but somehow, uh, and I think Dr. Singh has suffered from that. His reputation has no doubt suffered from that. I mean, in a sense, we don't know how history will judge him, but clearly uh, the man who made the most fundamental change, not only to economic policy, but during UPA 1, through the nuclear policy, with in our foreign policy as well, with the United States, he, he has led two revolutions. Uh, why he has been uh, sort of uh, so quiet is a great puzzle. You know, I, I, I myself uh, often think about it, that is it that the government is desperate just to survive till 2014 and doesn't want to rock any boats and doesn't want to lose any popularity, doesn't want to face a no-confidence motion. Right. Ajay, uh, last word with you. You know, in, 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 the in the defense of the government, many people would argue that some of the decisions that have been taken, directionally they're all right, it's only the delay which is perhaps causing this perception. Uh, do you think that's an accurate observation? Uh, well, I would, uh, uh, I, I, I would think so, because in an era of fractured mandates and coalition politics, with the pulls and pressures, massive pulls and pressures that the government has been subjected to, on of multiple issues, be it Lokpal, NCTC, uh, FDI in retail, FDI in aviation, uh, increase in fuel prices. I think the government intent is right. The government wants to do the right thing. Unfortunately, it needs to build consensus among its own house and among its own allies for, uh, uh, for some of these decisions sort of, you know, to be rolled out. And I think uh, if they're able to do, achieve that, uh, then I think uh, uh, the market will be uh, sort of, and will take it very positively. Lord Bigger Desai, uh, Ajay Bodke, many thanks for joining us with your perspective.